Hello. In this video, we're going to look at try and catch statements. So try and catch statements are used to tell the program what to do with specific errors. One thing you'll learn with try and st catch statements is that sometimes you need them and sometimes they're optional. And this is the basic structure of a try and catch um, statement. It always starts with the word try, and then we open a brace and create a code block. Inside this code block here is where we put the statement to try. Now this could be multiple statements to try in here, but essentially there's going to be a statement somewhere which could cause an error. Um, and so what we say is when an error occurs, it, it will throw an exception. So that's what a computer program does. When some sort of when some sort of error occurs, the, the program throws an exception that we need to deal with. So then connected to the try structure is a catch statement. And this catch statement is actually, it catches the specific exception. And then what we do is we make a code block and inside of here, this is what to do if things go wrong. So the idea is that we're telling the computer to try something. If it fails, it throws at you what happened. And then we tell the part of the program to catch that that exception, that mistake, and to do a specific thing. Now I've said a lot of words here. Why don't we look at a program to see how we can implement this? And so we're going to look at a program that um, everyone should be comfortable writing right now, and that is it simply takes an input from the user. So here we declare an integer called num. Um, we declare a scanner object. So we say we create an instance of the scanner class. And remember, the scanner class is useful because it has built-in methods to take inputs from keyboards. Um, and then what we do is we say, enter your favorite number, and it takes an input, and it puts it into num. So if I run this, enter your favorite number, 101, perfect. Now one thing we always think about as programmers is, what can the user do to mess things up? Yes, users aren't always the brightest individuals. Um, I'm sure we've all suffered from this. We get in front of a computer terminal and we don't really think about what we're doing and the program crashes. So we want to try and deal with um, situations where the user causes an error. And one of those situations is this. If I run this program and I type in the word the, obviously the isn't a number. And the computer knows that. So if when I hit enter, it's going to try and take um, it's going to try and take a string and put it into uh, an integer, and, and that is not good. And we'll see the computer is going to throw an exception at us. And there it is. So let me dr drag this up. So what's happened is we've had a problem and the program has crashed. And what's happened is what's called a type, an input mismatch exception. So that's a specific type of exception that occurs when the user tries to put the wrong type of value into a variable. So we're going to actually write a try and catch statement to stop our program from crashing. So the first thing we say to ourselves is, what is the line that actually causes the program to crash? And that's this line right here. So we have to put this line inside the try code block. And I can put lots, many lines of code inside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right there. I like to keep um, the input Pair, the input prompt paired with the actual statement that takes the input. So I'm telling the computer to try this. So now if I'm going to try this, I have to tell the computer what to do if, if things go wrong. So I'm going to add a catch statement to this. Now you're going to see if, you, if you're trying this and you go and hover over this mistake, it's going to say something about finally. Um, there is an added structure called a final but we're not going to look at it in this pro in this video. We're just going to talk about try and catch. So we're going to try and catch the specific exception. And because I ran this program and it failed, I see the exception is called an input mismatch exception. So I'm going to go right here and type in input mismatch exception. And we're going to call that E. Now you might be wondering, well, why, do, why does he put an E here at the end? And you also might notice that it looks kind of like he's declaring a variable. And in fact, that's what I'm doing. When the program has an error, and I should drag this down, 
it throws back an object. So that, think of it like a fancy variable. It contains all the information about that specific error. So what I do is I catch that and I put it into this variable E. And what I can do now is I can actually look at what caused the error and do specific things. For the, our purposes right now, we're not interested in that. We just have to tell the program what type of exceptions occurring. So now inside of here, I'm going to say system.out.printline. I asked for a number. So now if I run this, and we'll just drag this back up. If I put in the word the, and I hit enter, what it's going to do is realize there's been an input mismatch exception and jump right from this line to the catch statement and execute it. So if I hit enter, oh, I do that every time. Let me go into here and hit enter. It says I asked for a number. And the great thing now is your program hasn't crashed, so it continues on. So if I, let's put another line here. Program continues. And I run this now. If I put in the word the, the program continues. So the program hasn't crashed, which is a really good thing um, in terms of from a design perspective. One last point. There's lots of different types of exceptions that can be thrown. So what we want to do is to know how to figure out what specific exceptions can be thrown from a method. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to go to this method, and I'm going to put my mouse and hover over it. I'm using a clip so I can do this. You can always, of course, find the documentation online, and we would look under the scanner class documentation for this. So I'm going to click inside of here, and if I scroll down, you're going to see this throws. So the, these are the three different types of exceptions that this specific method throws. And it's good to note that I can actually write multiple I have to remember exactly what it was. I believe it was a legal state exception. I can actually write multiple catch statements here. And then depending on what error occurs, it will choose the correct course of action. So one last thing I, I really want to kind of just say once more before we go is that when what we do is we put the line that we're concerned about causing an error inside the try statement, or sorry, the try code block. The important thing to know is that as soon as it tries this, if it fails, so if an error is thrown, or an exception is thrown, it stops the try block and jumps right to that catch structure. So if I do something like this, good job, right? If I run this now, let's drag this up a little, if I run this now, number 101, good job, program continues, awesome. If I run this and I put a type mismatch error, so I put in the word the, let's say I can put in any word I want, and I hit enter, notice it doesn't print good job because it goes directly from this line right to the type mismatch. What do you think happens if I put in a 1.2? Perfect. That is a type mismatch as well because 1.2 is a double. Try catch statements are often a little intimidating. They're wonderful to use in terms of making your program run a little smoother. They're really useful when you start looking at files and other types of more advanced structures. So I hope this helped. Um, please check out uh, some of my other videos because I'm going to include some videos that look at using the try and catch structure in more advanced cases. Have a wonderful day.